In this week's episode of Seriously Fun Business TV, we celebrate our one year anniversary. I show you how to open a bottle of beer with just a kitchen knife, and I talk to you about how I got the most responses from any email I have ever sent out, and you can do the same. Hey, how you doing? Nick James here and welcome to episode number 13 of Seriously Fun Business TV. Now, I say episode 13 loosely because technically, if you've been paying attention, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done an episode. And the reason for that, and I'm looking at him, is because Big Fish has been a little bit slow on the <laughs> edit of episode actual 13. That's fair. So slow, in fact, that I decided that we're not even going to publish that episode. And the reason we're not going to publish the episode is because in that episode... I made a com completely incorrect prediction when it came to the EU <laughs> referendum, and so it feels better that that never gets shared, and I feel like it's almost um, a little bit off topic if we publish that video now. Um, so, I tell you what, if you do want us to publish that video, you can vote <laughs> by like putting a comment on the Facebook Live or under the... Uh, in the comments box underneath the video if you're watching the recording. Um, if you really, really, really want to see actual episode 13, we'll call it episode 13A, or 13.1. If you really, really want to see that episode, then let us know, and we might, we might do a director's cut, we might publish it, um, and shame me with my poor prediction about It'll be available on the DVD as a bonus there you go. option. There you go, perfect. So, um, welcome to episode 13.2, I guess this is, or 13B. Um, today's the 8th of July, and it is... The first birthday of Seriously Fun Business Day. 8th of July 2015. Cake. Cake. Uh, we're all going out tonight, aren't we? we? Um, so the 18th of, Jul uh, 8th of July 2015 was the official incorporation date of Seriously Fun Business Limited. So we've been in existence a year and we're all still here. Nobody's died. And we've all made a bit of money in the process. So it's only the official try. Yeah, you've tried to die, uh, but did you die? No. Uh, you've tried to die with a couple of. Uh, we've had one car end up on its side, we've another one end up on its roof on the M40. So it's been quite a dramatic year in terms of near death experiences, but we're all still here and we're all still having a good time. Um, so we're, we're one year in. Um, you may send cake and alcohol to our offices if you so wish. Um, in fact, there's a, there's a Corona in the fridge. Can somebody get me that Corona and open it? I think we should drink to a year oh, of SFB. I mean, it is quarter to twelve on a Friday, so I'm probably not going to drink it all. But uh, I think we should celebrate. I've also got two full bottles of uh, vodka. Yeah, I yes. definitely don't think we need to celebrate at that and level. Snow leopard. Just yet, I don't think. Um, this is like already the most like ridiculously off the cuff episode we've had so far we've got beers being popped in the kitchen we've got plans for well vodka to get opened as well fish that is a can opener not a bottle opener i'll tell you what if you want to get a knife out get me a knife and i'll show you how to do it with a knife fish on my car keys and i'll do it on camera this is gonna have to get edited out this is not good viewing but i'll do it on camera live on facebook i'll show you if you haven't got a bottle opener this is how you open a bottle Using just a knife, just an ordinary it becomes knife. tutorial videos this week. It is, it? yeah. This is the So here's what you do: you, you you grab the bottle like so. Facebook Live. I'll, I'll show you. You grab a bottle. This is this is a Corona. Other Mexican lagers are available, but they are nowhere near as good. And um, what you do is you grab the bottle um, like so, um, and you wrap your hand around it, and then you'll use your, your thumb and the knife as a leverage point. So you kind of use like the the bone on your thumb, so you can see that the knife kind of starts to bend, and then this is really going to go bad if it doesn't work. And then you <laughs> pop it off like that. Well, hey. There you go. Skills, skills to pay the bills. Oh, Adam's made a good point. I should have sh shaken that up really. <laughs> <laughs> that would have made me look like a right prat. Happy birthday, seriously from business. Happy birthday, Chief. Right, okay. Now let's actually actually do some content. Oh, right, there's an idea. Oh, the looks. God, don't, can't take him anywhere. So, um, People there might have suggested some shots as well. Perhaps? There might be a few Coronas drank this evening. 
as well as some of us. So um, we're going to Fumo, aren't we, tonight? Fumo in Birmingham, one of mine and Nat's favourite restaurants to go to. We're going there to celebrate this evening. Um, that we've been a year in business and we're all still alive and still making money. So, should we do some content? Let's go for it. Let's do some content, shall we? So, um, thought for today, um, and this is um, this is something that's uh, uh, that I thought I wanted to share with you because of a recent experience that I had, um, and that was that I decided, and you know what, like some people might have seen this as an error. Um, I, I had a few text messages from people saying, "Why on earth did you do that?" But I decided to put my balls on the chopping board, as you would say, and put myself out there regarding the EU referendum and say, here's how I voted, here's why I voted that way, that's only my opinion, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but here's what I think it now means. And here's, regardless of whether you voted to remain or voted to leave, the fact is we are where we are, and here's what I think us as business owners should be doing now. Because the truth is, and I wrote this email the day after the referendum vote, the truth is, one, we don't know what's going to happen next. So because of that, two, you might as well just bloody well get on with it. Get on with doing what you do best. Get on with running events. Get on with doing webinars. Get on with helping clients. Get on with doing what you do best. Because you can't impact on the economy. You can't do... The only thing you can impact on is your own economy is how your business operates, how you operate as an individual. And all you can really influence is how you think and how you act and how you react to what's going on externally. Um, and so um, that was my little spiel, by the way. That's the short version of the email content. Um, but I got a lot of emails. I mean, Lauren, you check the email inbox, don't you? I mean, I don't think we've ever had that many replies to an email that I've sent out, a broadcast that I've sent out ever before. We had a lot, a, a lot of replies about 95% of which were extremely positive, right? Yeah. About 95% were extremely positive. The other 5% were extremely <laughs> negative. These are people that now hate me, that apparently, according to them, I've completely discredited myself. They want to unsubscribe. By the way, there's always a button at the bottom of the email, just do it yourself. Um, but they felt so passionate about that they wanted to... The fish is like... Crying, going, don't tell people how to unsubscribe, it'll affect his stats. Look, you know, if you don't want to be on my list, unsubscribe. I'm guessing the fact that you're watching this video tells me that you've got some interest in what I've got to say. Anyway, the point I'm getting around to here, because we had, you know, loads of responses, 95% of which were extremely positive, probably 5% of which hate my guts and now think I'm a complete waste of space. That's fine. The point was, it got people engaged. It got people in conversation with me. I made sure that I responded to each and every one personally. Um, I make a standard of that. If somebody emails me and they want to speak, you know, they've got a question for me or they want to speak to me, I make a point of replying to that email personally. I did that to each and every one. There was lots and lots and lots of them. Um, but the point is, I think we need to stand for something. I think you as somebody who runs events, you as somebody who serves customers and clients, you as somebody who makes videos or hosts webinars, you need to stand for something. You need to have an opinion. Um, everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's entitled to that opinion. And I think you should share that opinion. And is that going to make you the most popular person in the world? Definitely not. Lauren, having watched my inbox closely for the last couple of weeks, will attest to the fact that it's never going to make you the most popular person in the world. But my belief is what it will do, and it might polarise your audience a little bit, is it will make people either hate your guts, but... They never would have been your ideal customers anyway, and the more they get to know you, they wouldn't have got on with you, and they would have been a pain in the ass and asked for the money back and just been a, a hassle. So you're better off not dealing with them at all in the first place. Or it will make people respect you more, love you more, warm to you more. They're more likely to do, uh, therefore, more likely to do business with you. So for my opinion and um, uh, what I invite for you to do today is to stand for something. Stand for something. If you've got an opinion on something, share it. Um, share it, you know, unreservedly, and tell people what it is you're interested in. Tell it, tell people what your opinions are on all things. You know, specifically if you can relate them to the thing that you're the expert in, then great. So for me, you know, I'm always looking for a way to link current affairs to events, to how you can get more bums on seats, to how you can generate more revenue for your business. I'm always looking for a way to relate current affairs to that. But if you're in the health and nutrition field, maybe look at 
how you can relate current affairs to that in particular. Or, you know, if you're in kind of performance psychology, maybe you'd look at the difference between the performance of England and Iceland the other week. And there's a significant difference in performance levels between those two teams. So you could look at that and you could give your opinion on why England completely tanked and failed at the Euros and why Iceland over-delivered massively and how Wales over-delivered massively. So you can use that, you can use those current affairs as your opinion to stand for something, decide what your mantra is, what your beliefs are, and then stand behind them and put them out there. And my belief is that you'll um, create a lot more engagement with your audience, you'll have a lot more people that will be drawn towards you, and those that aren't ideally suited to working with you will be pushed away, and that's a good thing. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed today's little rant. I hope that the opening a beer with just a knife was useful, uh, and that will be valuable for you, I'm sure, at some point when you're at a barbecue and there is no bottle opener available, or if you've got somebody in your team who thinks a tin opener is a bottle opener, doesn't know the difference between the two, then you can help them out with that. Um, so I hope you found today's episode entertaining, useful. Uh, we're off to celebrate this evening the first anniversary of Seriously Fun Business. Now I'm going to take a quick time out to insert Big Fish's meme of the week. Introduce Big Fish's meme of the week. So anyway, listen, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I as always enjoyed making it for you. Thanks for tuning in once again. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.